Welcome to another video for chemistry. In this video, we're going to be discussing precipitation reactions. And this is part one. This is a pretty lengthy topic, so I've divided it into two separate videos uh, to shorten it out and make it not as long and possibly monotonous. So here it goes. Let's take a look at some of the vocabulary words that we're going to be discussing uh, in these two videos. In this particular video, we're going to only discuss um, actually, we'll discuss two out of the three terms here, which is precipitation reaction, precipitate, and solubi solubility. Uh, double displacement reaction, which goes into the, this topic, we'll look at more closely in another video. So a common type of reaction is precipitation reaction. The result in this is the formation of an insoluble product or precipitate. So these are very key terms that we need to understand. This is uh, the concepts that will help us in understanding uh, what we see in reactions. So we're going to take a look at two key words in this statement, insoluble and precipitate. All right, so uh, insoluble solid is one that separates from the solution. Okay, uh, an example of something like that, something that is insoluble would be like putting a rock in a uh, cup of water. That rock is insoluble. It's not going to immediately separate into the water so much so that you can't even tell that, uh, the, rock is in, that, that the rock is in the water at all. Uh, you can contrast that with salt. When you put salt in water and you, it, the salt will eventually dissolve, it will become, it is soluble. It will dissolve so much so that you probably won't even be able to tell that there's salt in the water. So again, an insoluble compound is something that when you put it in water, it does not dissolve and it remains in a solid state. It remains in a very visible state. You can still see and differentiate it from, uh, let's say, the water. So let's take a look at a more chemistry example of this. And these are all reactions that we will perform in class as demonstrations or in lab. So you'll actually get to see what this material looks like when you mix it with other solutions. So this is an example of a solution that you'll see. Uh, you have lead nitrate with potassium iodide. And you'll notice on the left-hand side, on our reaction side, that uh, both are in a aqueous state. So when you look at these two, when you look at these two compounds, lead nitrate and potassium iodide, you're not going to be able to tell that there's anything in them, which is a reason why you never, never, never drink or eat anything in a chemistry lab because you can never really tell if it's contaminated with anything else. So you'll see two beakers that look like water, but they actually have ions dissolved in them. They're in an aqueous state. So if I had my atom vision, I could see that uh, on the left-hand side, I could see lead. I would be able to see lead just kind of floating around and nitrate floating around as well. They never really mix. They, they bump into each other all the time because there's millions and millions of these atoms and molecules floating around, but there is no reaction in R. So they just bounce off of each other. And similar on the other side, you'll have potassium and iodide just floating around in an aqueous state. And again, they bump into each other all the time, but there's no match. There's no reaction. It doesn't happen. Okay, so they're both very soluble and no reaction, and they remain uh, as such. Okay? All right. So now, Something interesting happens when I mix these two solutions. So what you're going to see is I, as I pour potassium iodide into my lead nitrate, you're going to see something interesting happening. You're going to notice a change in color. A reaction is occurring. Okay, so we're going to take a closer look at what is actually happening here. Um, so when you pour, when you mix both of these solutions together, okay, You'll have potassium and iodide collide, you'll have nitrates collide, but nothing happens. There's no reaction that occurs with these. But something interesting happens when iodide, if you look at the blue and the green uh, with lead, something interesting happens when these two collide. When they collide together, there's enough energy, there's enough energy for them to combine, and then a reaction actually ha happens. And iodide and lead combine together. But not just that, they don't just, combi they don't just combine as individual atoms, but when, uh, when lead iodide bumps into another lead iodide, they actually combine together also, and they end up all clumping together. 
and you have these large clumps and they do not dissolve into the liquid. They clump together and they become a solid and that's the yellow that you see in the liquid. Okay, so let's discuss that the second term here. Oh, actually, let me back up a little bit. So this solid that you see is what we call a precipitate. Okay, this is the precipitate. This is the solid that does not dissolve in the liquid solution. Okay, so solubility. This is the next term that we're going to take a closer look at. Uh, what does it mean to be soluble? So if a fair amount of if a fair amount of what you put in dissolves when added to water. Compounds can be slightly soluble or insoluble, meaning that um, if I put a compound in a liquid, if it dissolves quickly, then you would say it's very soluble. Uh, if it dissolves partially, then it's slightly soluble. And if it doesn't dissolve at all, it just kind of, it just kind of clunks, clunks into the water and stays that way as a solid. Then it is insoluble. Okay, so not everything is equally soluble. So how can we predict if something is going to be soluble? So you don't always have to mix compounds or solutions together to find out if they're soluble or not. Now we're going to do that anyway, so that uh, we're going to do that with a lot of uh, solutions, so that we can get a visual. But you can actually just predict it by looking at what's called the solubility chart. Okay. So to understand how to use this solubility chart, we're going to look again our, at our reaction that we just did. Okay. So let's look at our reaction side. Let's take a close look at lead in this reaction. Now we already know that lead, when I mixed it with nitrate in an aqueous solution, if you, if you look over here, it remained in an aqueous solution. So every time lead bumped into nitrate, okay, let me back up, every time lead bumped into nitrate, nothing happened. So let's see how we can figure this out, uh, how this looks on a solubility chart. So on this chart, I'm gonna first look for lead and nitrate and I have them circled right there. And I'm going to find, I'm gonna go down each row and column and see where they meet, and they meet right there. And you'll see that it's soluble, which means that lead and nitrate, when they're combined together, they're soluble, which means they're going to be, they're going to dissolve in an aqueous solution. So if something is soluble, that means it dissolves in the solution, and that's what happens with both of these. That's why when you mix it with water, it looks like water still, like nothing is happening. Okay? All right. So there's the result of mixing those two. I still have an aqueous solution. Now, what happens when I mix lead with the other elements in my other compound? So now I've mixed both both beakers. What Will lead mix with potassium? Well, if you look at the charges here, lead has a plus two charge and potassium has a plus one charge. Okay? And as we discussed before, like charges in chemistry do not combine. In chemistry, opposites always react. Well, not always, but opposites tend to react, okay? Because here I have a opposite plus charge with a negative, but there wasn't a reaction. Uh, in this case, I have a plus two charge and a plus one charge. There will definitely be no reaction in this case. Two cations do not react. Two, two elements with a positive charge do not react in chemistry. So what about iodine? Well, let's go to our chart. Uh, first, let me show you, let me confirm with you how uh, when I mix lead and uh, potassium. Well, if we look at potassium, first of all, it's in the same, it's in the same row. So you know there's going to be no reaction with uh, potassium and, and lead. But now you see iodine. So let's see, let's find where iodine and potassium, uh, iodine and lead will meet. And there they meet right there. And you'll notice there that it's insoluble. So when you have these two elements combine, you end up with an insoluble solution, which means they do not dissolve in the solution, which means that they form a solid. And you'll notice, look at what happens with lead on the reaction side. It goes from being an aqueous into a solid. And the same thing happens, and the same thing happens with our iodide. Iodine here. Is, a, is an aqueous state, but then when mixed, it becomes a solid. So there's a reaction between lead and iodine. There's a reaction to form lead iodide. Actually, it's called lead 2 iodide, and it, this is a solid. Okay. Anytime that you see in a chemical reaction that you have a change of state, like here you have aqueous and then changing to solid, then you know 
that there was a reaction that has occurred, okay? And in this case, you have an ins uh, a soluble compound combined with another one, and this uh, combined with another one, as in lead and iodine, and this particular combination creates an insoluble, uh, insoluble compound, which makes it a solid, or as we call it, a precipitate. So this solid is called a precipitate, which is one that does not dissolve in the liquid. Okay, well, that does it for this part of the video for precipitation reactions, part two. And uh, next will be part, I'm sorry, did I say part two? I meant part one. The next video is part two. We'll take a closer look at these reactions and how to use our solubility chart. Good luck in your studying.